Hi there, welcome. Today I want to talk about face plates. Which is superior? The commercial steel face plate or your homemade shop built face plates? Well, the steel one has one advantage in that because it's steel, when you put a screw through, if you over tighten it, you don't have to worry about snapping the face plate. If you do the same thing with a wooden face plate and it's running with the grain, you could snap it. Advantages of the wooden ones, you can make as many as you want once you have the spindle tap, and you can make them any size you want. Buying a steel one six inches can cost $40 or more at times. I've got a number of them. I've got about four or five of the four inch. I've got a six inch, and I use them a lot, but occasionally I want a different size. When I do, I can make as many as I want, as I said, and I actually enjoy doing it as well. Now then, what's the difference between a faceplate and a glue block? Obviously, the holes for the screws. You can use the faceplate as a glue block. There's nothing to say you can't glue something to it if you want to, instead of using the screw holes. So today, I'm going to go into making a large faceplate. I have another video already out there on how to make a small glue block. But I can't make a large glue block in the same method, so what you're going to see, you can use it as a glue block, just don't put the holes in, or a faceplate. So let's take a look at how to make these. This is not a beautiful piece of wood. It's certainly not clear. There's a knot here, a little bit of a knot there but it's good enough for what I'm going to use it. Now I've taken a compass after I found the center and drawn four circles. The outside one is where I will be turning it down to and on these three I want to put screw holes. So my first step will be to just draw a line across center and then take my protractor and mark every 45 degrees. So one at 90, one at 45, and one at 135. Then I can draw lines across center again to mark where the screw holes will go on those three circles. I'm trying to be accurate but not going crazy about it. I'm not building a watch here. So now, my next step will be to drill the holes. With the holes drilled for the screws, my next step will be to drill in the center a 1 and 1 8 inch hole using a Forster bit. That's the size I need to accommodate my inch and a quarter spindle tap. Normally, I would just screw my glue block onto the spindle and then using hot glue, center this plate on there and glue it. Because you may not already have a glue block, I'm going to use a square block in my jaws, on my large jaws. Then using hot glue again, I will center it on there using my live center, glue that, and once the glue is cooled, then I can drill that hole. I have the square block in my large jaws now. I'm going to bring up my tail stock and use the live center to make sure it's centered on that. And then use hot glue around the edge to fasten it. Now I'll give that plenty of time to cool properly and then it'll be ready to work with. I'm going to use the 1 and 1 8 inch Forster bit to drill that hole and I've got a line marked on the shaft just so I know how far to go in. 
I'm going to be turning at 250 RPM. And that gives me a hole completely through into the blue block I'm using. Now I have the spindle locked so the disc won't turn. I'm going to put my spindle tap in the hole, bring the tailstock with the live center up, and as I use this 9 16 wrench to turn the spindle tap in, at the same time I'm going to advance the tailstock to make sure that it stays centered. While the camera was off, I had drilled that one and one eighth inch hole all the way through the glue block, just to make sure that this would thread in as far as necessary. Now I'll just pull this out and carry on. Now I'm going to remove the hot glue so I can take this disc off, then I'm going to put that on the spindle. I'll turn it on to the spindle because it'll be much stronger than the glue and I also want to make sure that it's running true. And then I can turn the outside round. This is why I like using hot glue so much. Usually a couple of minutes with a putty knife is enough to get this taken apart and I can scrape off the little bit of residue that's left and carry on working. If I was using tight bond or one of the other yellow glues, I'd have a real mess to clean up. Probably lots of turning and sanding to straighten everything out. This just saves a lot of time. I'll be back as soon as I get this done. And there you have it. About two minutes tops and I've got this cleaned off, ready to go to work. Now I'll put it back on the lathe and turn this round and it'll be ready to use. This disc is about an eighth of an inch thinner than the length of this spindle. So I've taken a scrap piece of wood, quarter of an inch thick, put an inch and a quarter hole in the center of it and that'll take up the space so that the spindle is not sticking through the hole. And now I'm just going to turn this round. This is running very close to true, but not perfectly. So I'm going to face off this just a little bit and then use my sanding board to sand it flat. Very close. A little bit with the sanding board and I should have it perfectly. Now I'm going to use my sanding board with an 80 grit sandpaper on it to sand this flat. So there it is, another 10 inch faceplate that I'm sure I'll use somewhere along the line. I also drilled through and tapped the block that this was glued to, so I have that to use it in the future as well. 
Now, I'm not a professional woodworker or wood turner. I do this because I enjoy it. It's my hobby. It's fun. If you feel the same way, maybe you'll want to try something like this. These aren't cheap, the spindle tap. The last time I checked, I believe it was about $37 Canadian at Lee Valley, which is, I don't know, $5 US or something. Right, not that bad. Anyway, you can make all the sizes, all the quantities that you want, and I enjoy doing it, so that's why I'm doing it. I hope you enjoyed this, maybe you got something out of it. Thank you for dropping in. Have a great day in your shop and be safe. Don't forget to subscribe now. Thanks, bye bye now.